My name is Patrick Rokita. I'm the Vice President of Systems Architecture at MetNumba. And during the next 20 minutes, I will share my experience with the planning and implementation of a standalone private 5G network solution and also elaborate on the key lessons learned. So a quick recap on 5G. The fifth generation of mobile networks has been standardized back in 2018. And compared to 4G, uh, 5G delivers simply more and faster data. For this, the 5G new radio supports new spectrum bands, the C band and the millimeter wave band, and they are delivering higher throughput and low latency data plane for data centric over the top applications. The 5G core is built on a service based architecture that is transparent to the access type and suitable for both bare metal and virtualized deployments, including virtual private and public clouds. The scalability is mainly achieved by using containerized microservices that are managed by a container orchestration framework. And finally, 5G is more secure. Besides public networks, uh, also known as the carrier networks or the communication service provider networks, 3GPP also defines the use of the 5G technology for non-public networks, aka the private networks. 3GPP distinguishes between two main types of the private networks, the standalone private network on the left and the private network that is integrated into a public network on the right. The major differentiator is the level of autonomy and naturally the integrated private network needs a connectivity to a public network to deliver the contracted services. As a benefit, the integrated private networks can provide the full range of 5G services, including the traditional telephony and text service, and also may utilize the existing radio network of the public network provider, thus delivering the lower cost or a lower cost for the enterprise. In this session, I will focus on the standalone private networks that come at a higher complexity and cost to the enterprise, but also at the benefit of a full autonomy, including situation where all public communications are down. Such private networks are mainly used for isolated operations in the outbacks, at the sea, in case of a disaster response, for public safety and more. Standalone private networks deliver data-centric communication services and artificial intelligence directly at the deployed location that may be even unknown until the start of the mission. So the next slide, please. The term, the minimum viable private network that you, that you see on the slide shall underline the necessity to exactly know what market segment and service consumers you target with your private network solution. Different market segments and different service consumers, office workers, tactical teams, machines, fast moving vehicles, and so on, come with different requirements. Mobility, for example, may or may not be required. And of course, you may design your 5G network solution to support any market segment, for example, by the means of network slicing, but you may not be able to scale your deployment down so that the equipment can be transported to the location where the mission critical service is powered on using a battery pack and available just within minutes uh, to the first response team. So the case study in this presentation is an autonomous private 5G core network solution that can be used in a disaster response or public safety situations. And the associated requirements you see outlined on this slide. Note the list also includes the support of multiple radio access network instances and the mobility between these. This is not necessarily needed if operating ad hoc in a fairly small and open area, but can be needed when spawning a private 5G network, for example, around a football stadium or a mining facility. As already mentioned, the deployment model is heavily dependent on what situation needs to be tackled and what parties, humans and or machines 
are involved in the communications. The next slide, please. The market segments targeted by the private 5G network solutions show the following main streams. It's either massive scale for the industrial IoT, or it's high throughput for real-time analytics, can be low latency for robotics, and vehicles, can be traditional communication services such as telephony and internet for office workers and students. In the latter case, when it comes to communication or telephony communication, mission critical um, over the top applications delivering, for example, encrypted push to talk may be preferred over the telephony services as we know them from our day-to-day -day life. Further note that many use cases targeted by the private 5G network solution may not be even publicly disclosed. Okay, the next slide, please. In our case study that is targeting a private 5G network solution that can be used in the disaster response or public safety situations, the minimum requirements include all operations that are needed for the user equipment, radio access network equipment, subscriber and service related data to be provisioned, configured and maintained. Note the minimum requirements include all security features because entities such as the user equipment may simply enforce them at any time. And as already mentioned, mobility may not be necessarily required. For an easy reuse of the private 5G core network components, it is recommended to implement the 5G service-based architecture consisting of containerized 5G network functions right from the start. The separation of the network, compute, and storage functions, in addition to the 3GPP defined separation of the control and user plane, enables scalability of the design solution and its seamless interoperability, for example, with the components of a public 5G network, if such requirement exists. In our case, the private 5G mobile network primarily has to be transportable, uh, battery powered, and easy to use also by a non-technically skilled personnel. Um, the next slide, please. The implementation of the private 5G network core is rather a straightforward task for telco professionals and especially for those with the knowledge of the Evolve package systems. But out of my experience, every capable programmer could basically program and create a 5G mobile core. The application of the 5G user equipment and the radio access network and, and, and this means the NAS, NGAP, uh, GTP, and other protocols can be easily delivered by simulators that greatly help in mimicking use cases that would be hardly achievable, inconvenient, or non-repetitive when using real equipment. Also, the setup of the gigabit software data plane involving multiple user equipments and radio access network instances can be easily managed in this way. Of course, the use of real equipment up to the affordable cost or budget is still a must in order to succeed in building a reliable private 5G network core solution. So you see on the slide that during the implementation phase that I referred to, uh, there was a mixture of uh, simulators and real equipment use in the continuous integration uh, process till we basically finalized with uh, the scalability and performance related tests using simulators. And so moved the uh, project maturity or product maturity towards a, a release candidate. And as you are correctly hearing, I am mentioning the 5G core as a subject to implementation. While the private network additionally includes the user equipment, the access network components and the application that may even require additional subsystems such as the IMS. It's up to you to define whether your private network solution is just a 5G core software that needs an integration with the user equipment, access network, and application vendors, or whether you opt for a turnkey product transportable, for example, in a Pelly case. The expected level of integration may vary across different target segments and use cases. So again, knowing your target customer base is a key. 
The next slide, please. Let's elaborate on the case study that is in the focus of this session. The use case is showing a response to a natural disaster that requires the emergency team to communicate, collect, and analyze data while the public communications are down. As such situation happens ad hoc, uh, there is no planning of the deployment possible. So in this case, the private 5G network equipment is transported to the location and the private 5G network is set up there just within minutes after the arrival. And then push to talk out of sight, out of sight uh, high definition video delivered, for example, by drones. And real-time analytics are the major examples of the communication services required to successfully manage the disaster situation and to save lives. On the next slide, you will see a video showing the setup and basic operations of a private 5G network. Um, the solution, yeah, I will come to that later when the video has finished. So enjoy the video. Okay, we can stay here for a moment um, and I will elaborate on, on what basically the video was showing, uh, even it was probably pretty straightforward. So the solution um, that you have seen uh, is a combination of the Netcore 5G software created by NetNumber and 5G equipment that is manufactured by D-Link and Cable3. Yeah. The private 5G network um, that you have seen is utilizing the C-band uh, with real world data uh, or download data rates between 50 and 300 megabits per second, while data rates of 500 megabits uh, per second and higher can be achieved using the millimeter wave band. Uh, Netcore 5G is a commercial product that includes configuration, licensing, data provisioning, alarms, logs, and KPI collections. In addition uh, to, what you, to what was shown in the video, and Therefore, on the next slide, you will see the history of the solution that has started a long time ago with the support of 2G, 3G networks. So as mentioned, the Netcore software has a long history and has incrementally evolved with the support of the 5G non-standalone core and dual radio uh, added last year, and the support of the 5G standalone core and single radio being finalized as I speak. The maximum data speed that, as you can see, is not quantified yet for the 5G standalone solution will probably be somewhere in the range of 250 and 300 megabits per second for the sub six gigahertz range or band. And so reflect the difference between the LTE and 5G non-standalone network uh, that utilizes dual radio LTE and 5G in parallel. So 250, 300 meg megabits per second download speed is also what you have seen uh, during the demo. As of now, the Netcore 5G solution is best suitable for data-centric over-the-top applications, but future add-ons may include further optimization for the industrial internet of things, voice over new radio, and the support of Wi-Fi, including the access traffic steering, splitting, and switching capability for multi-access sessions. The next slide, please. 
Due to a long lasting experience with building private networks, the implementation of both the 5G non-standalone and 5G standalone capabilities in the Netcore 5G software was rather a straightforward exercise. But let me still elaborate on few key lessons learned and pitfalls to avoid that may be valuable to the teams that are new in this game. Most of the findings you will see are pretty obvious, but the more painful you know it is if they are not observed on time during the planning and implementation of the private 5G network solution. So in my opinion, the most important topic to observe is the market segment and the consumers that shall benefit from your solution and when they are ready for it. Many customers are interested in 5G, but they see obstacles to introduce it. And, and these obstacles may include the lack of the required technical knowledge, the funds, the av uh, availability of the 5G equipment, you know, how to transfer the, the business towards 5G. So here we are not just talking about phones. Uh, it's much more complex uh, uh, situation. And then depending on when your market window opens, uh, you can define the minimum viable product that shall address the critical requirements of the market that you target. A lot of complexity can be avoided uh, by wisely selecting the operations to be supported by the initial version of your private 5G network solutions. And as example, I wanna mention the appropriate selection of the consumer producer communication mode if you are skilled with 5G core. If you aim for a turnkey solution that needs contributions or products from third parties, then you have to define the integration reference points quite precisely, for example, by pointing to a specific 3GPP release. From what I see across the open source project, the focus there is mainly on integrating with third-party radio and user equipment while shortcuts are being taken between the 5G core components, so internally. And worth to mention the 5G uh, core uh, by net number, net core 5G software that was also presented in, in, this, in this demo is an in-house developed software. So we have reused a lot of experience gained out of the implementation of the Evolve package systems and therefore had to focus just on the 5G specific add-ons. And this has speeded up the implementation and the test phase significantly, including the use of self-developed simulators delivering scenarios that would be hardly achievable or not repeatable when using real equipment. You will have to set up your private 5G network solution inside a lab that delivers 5G characteristics. Using the public infrastructure as a service or internet might be okay in the start to save on compute resources and, 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 and test environment, but it may also create or will create the need for you to implement things like network address translation for the GNODE B and user plane function GTP endpoints. And of course, if you use uh, public servers, your speed test will max out at the office link speed. The last hint, don't cheat on the security features. It will make your product look immature. And especially these standalone private networks, you must know, are valued for their autonomy, communication privacy, and security. The next slide, please. For those who do not know NetNumber, um, NetNumber um, is a communication solution supplier with a portfolio that comprises more than 20 products in the signaling, security, routing, global data, and private network space. The entire product portfolio is being migrated to cloud native to enable intergenerational network transformation that is more than just 5G. And with this, we have reached the end of the session. I hope it was valuable to you to see how a private 5G network solution can be planned, implemented, and delivered as a product to the market. Please address any suggestions or comment to me. I will be happy to answer them. And thank you for attending. With this, over to Annie. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Patrick. Really uh, a lot of information there, as always, um, with your presentations. Um, one of the things I'm curious about is um, the telecoms industry is always chasing after scale because of the efficiencies and the economies, and yet each private 5G network seems to be a special case in itself, or 
Are you working so that you're able to replicate what you've done before? And, and how easy is that? Because each situation is different and maybe the service parameters are different, for example, in each deployment. Thank you, Annie. That's, that's an excellent question. And, and it's really the truth that different situations uh, in the private network space need, may need different deployment models. The, the, I, would, I would distinguish two main or three main use cases. One is when you need to show up with a ready to use uh, 5G mobile network on the spot. Yeah? You have disaster uh, situation that you need to manage and you cannot start um, doing any planning or, or uh, construct uh, radio uh, towers and, and, and wire them together uh, via, via cables or, or, or via microwaves. Uh, for that, you need, need to simply show up with a car that can spawn the 5G network on the spot right on time for the emergency or first response teams to operate. So that's one flavor that you deliver to the market. The second flavor is that you deliver something uh, that might be temporary, but can be planned ahead, such as soccer game or, or other event where tactical teams or security teams need to operate uh, and use uh, private uh, communication that is encrypted. Uh, so with that, you can basically spin up a more complex network that involves uh, multiple entities at different locations communicating to each other. And yet another deployment model is when you setting up private networks uh, in an office or on a university campus or in an education center, that probably will be the best way to tackle by uh, integrating with a public network provider, yeah, because it's something that is that is quite static. And now to your question, when you when you implement and plan a 5G private network solution that shall tackle many of these cases, then yes, uh, your functionality should be planned and coded in a way. That, is re that it is reusable across these different deployment scenarios. And you know, the cloud native world is perfectly suitable for that. It, it provides for the uh, implementation of even complex solution with containerized microservices that can scale down so that they fit into something that is transportable, as well as then can scale out to support 10,000s of users on a campus or in an office. So we Definitely pay attention when implementing the Netcore 5G software that our work is reusable. And as a matter of fact, the same functionality of a network function, let's say AMF, yeah, uh, uh, access mobility and management function, uh, the same function you will see when we deploy a private network as well as we would deliver AMF to a uh, carrier network operator. It's the same code, it's just scaled and deployed in a different way. Okay, thank you. Um, we've also had a question about um, how big an effect do you feel that COVID has had on the private 5G network, mar network market? So the COVID situation that involves more uh, uh, home-based education and, and home working, uh, that um, is a business area that NetNumber is not so really involved in we are more delivering solutions that are in the emergency and, and tactical business. Uh, so, um, I'm just wondering maybe if the question is really about sort of, do you think people put investment in private networks off private 5G networks during COVID because of the difficulties of um, deployment, because um, a lot of businesses were struggling. So maybe finance was an issue. And maybe, you know, I don't know if that happens, I'm asking. And then mm -hmm. after COVID, have you seen a, an, an upswing in activity or? So what, we, what we have seen during the COVID is that uh, deployments, they, they do take place. Yeah, that's simply happening. It's just that, uh, yeah, the work is getting significantly delayed because, uh, for instance, when you're setting up something that is statical in an office or, or at a site, you need the people to move in. And, and run acceptance testing and so on. And, and because of COVID, the presence of the personal on site or in the offices where the work happens uh, might not be possible at any time. So yeah, um, the business is still up, but during COVID, the uh, project phase, yeah, that was significantly extended. Um, I also like the temporary but planned um, second scenario that you outlined for 5G private networks. Um, 
Do you think that's kind of where the biggest market is or do you think the bigger market is with um, the sort of um, campus and manufacturing and stuff? I, I, so there are two ways to, to talk about public networks. One is that, that you basically use internet and what's, what is happening there. And then you will see a lot of uh, stories and news about uh, communication service providers doing offerings to enterprises, mainly uh, industrial uh, IoT, uh, Industry 4.0. And they basically, what they basically create is a dedicated network slice and, and data network that they allocate uh, to, the, to the enterprise. And that market is uh, mainly based on a, on a business model. Yeah, it must be a win-win situation for both parties. And, 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 and we talk about the integrated uh, uh, private network that basically uses the, the, the public network as a, as a carrier. Um, in, the, in the standalone private uh, network space, um, it's really hard for me uh, to, to, uh, to, to publicly expose anything about our customers. But those ones I can expose were mainly uh, related to, to uh, rural broadband in areas like Australia, where simply people do not have internet connectivity. It's also at the sea, yeah, oil and gas industry. It's mining. But again, there are many other use cases for standalone private networks that, that are happening and that are not disclosed to the public. Therefore, the information about private networks as available on the internet may not really accurately reflect what is really happening. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and I'm also thinking from Australia in um, sparsely populated areas to gas rigs and mining and all the rest of it, you pick some seriously tough environments to work in. Yeah, and 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 and, and it's always really nice, even on a uh, big container ship, when you do not always have to walk <laughs> across the entire ship to the bridge to say something to the captain. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've never tried that, but I can imagine it's quite a walk. And maybe in rough seas, not a lot of fun either. It's okay. Intense, yeah. <laughs> so, Patrick, thank you very much indeed. A pleasure always. Um, we'll see you sometime soon, we hope. My thank pleasure. Thank you so Annie. much. Thank you. Have a good day.